in your family. I said, doctor, do you know what the real problem is? Nobody runs in my bloody family. <laughs> he said, because of the color of your skin, you're at greater risk of developing type 2 diabetes. I said, that's not fear. That's discrimination. Sugar is racist. <laughs> Even brown sugar. <laughs> and that's the reason why Asian people should play football. But the only problem with that is, every time they get a corner, they open a shop at it. <laughs> now, I know that's a very, very, very old joke, even older than some of you here. And it's not racist, because I'm Asian. <laughs> but you know what is racist? Are the two white men who told me the joke last week. <laughs> so, I wanted to go to America to use my green card. And there were three things I needed to do. The first thing was change my name. The second thing was to get a new sense of humor. And the third thing was to change my accent. So I was in this bar in Texas having a drink, as you do in the morning. And I thought, I'll have a coffee instead. So I said to the barman, can I get a white coffee? And he said to me, oh ma'am, I'm really sorry. We don't do white coffee. And I'm thinking, I can see the coffee machine just there. So I said to him, can I get a black coffee with milk on the side? And he's like, sure, man. And I thought, do you know they're so bloody racist in Texas, they don't even mix their coffees? <laughs> <laughs> I was in the shopping mall, and this woman said to me, oh, gee, is that an accent? I'm like, you should have heard my last one. <laughs> Yes, I'm from, I'm from Edinburgh. And she's like, Edinburgh? Well, why the fuck do Americans always add food to everything? <laughs> and then, no, I'm from Scotland. She had no idea where Scotland was. No idea. So I said, I'm from United Kingdom. And she's like, ah, oh, London. I'm like, no, fuck off, not London. <laughs> Say that. I didn't want to be chopped out of the country for having intelligence. <laughs> so I, I've lived in Edinburgh a long, long time, and the most popular question I get asked is, Where am I from? Right? So I say, Well, I'm from Edinburgh. And the, the wee voice goes back, Now, where are you really from? <laughs> and I'm like, Well, okay, I was born in Pakistan, but I've lived in Scotland all my life. No, where are you really, really from? <laughs> Says the posh man from Morningside. At this point, I'm thinking, what the fuck is he meaning? Do you think I'm an alien? A zombie? American? And he comes back and he says, No, you are from Glasgow. <laughs> true story, guys, true story. Who knew it was worth to be a Ouija? than it was to be an alien zombie of Pakistani origin. <laughs> so I am glass region, okay? And um, despite the accents. And uh, went to school here, went to university here. And when I was at university, right, what do you think the most popular question was I was asked? What school did I go to? Do you know why they're asking that, don't you? What school did I go to? Yeah, what religion are you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really? Do they need to ask, you know? First day of Ramadan and I'm dying of starvation here. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, I'm Muslim. And this wee voice comes back to me and says, I hear, but are you a Catholic Muslim or are you a Protestant Muslim? <laughs> I said, no, I'm a part of this all supporter. <laughs> so being a stand-up comedian wasn't the ideal job that my Pakistani parents had in mind for me. You know, top jobs, doctor, lawyer, engineer, disgrace to family. <laughs> so my sister's a lawyer, my brother's an engineer, and my mom's like, why could you not be a doctor? I was too busy being disgraced to family. <laughs> I married a man from Paisley. <laughs> Somebody had to. 
So when we first got married, right, he thought I was posh, because in those days spray tan was in its infancy. <laughs> <laughs> Women always get that joke. <laughs> and he thought I was posh because I wasn't orange like the rest of the girls in this time. <laughs> See, when they went out to the bingo at night, it was like the orange walk. <laughs> my tan wouldn't fade no matter how hard he rubbed. <laughs> Still the same colour. And, um, and when the kids came out, can't they latte colour? <laughs> well, he knew he'd been snookered because he'd potted the bag. <laughs> and I knew I'd been tangled because he buggered off. <laughs> so my children don't like me doing stand-up. something really quickly <laughs> and my daughter said to me mum why can't you be like the rest of my friends mums you know like join the PTA go out for lunch drink lots of alcohol forget to pick the kids up from school <laughs> been there done that she doesn't remember she was a baby <laughs> and my son's like mum why can't you have a real midlife crisis you know like buy a sports car take box get a new addiction watch all cocaine <laughs> or have an affair with a younger man <laughs> so I said that at my last gig, right? In Edinburgh, I said that at my last gig, and this 22-year-old true came up to me and said, do you know that thing you were saying about threesomes? I'm like, ah, he said, I'd be up for that. <laughs> <laughs> Youngsters nowadays, they want everything for free. <laughs> Very wobbly, it's like my self esteem. Uh, so. oh. Right, so, yeah, sorry, yes, hello, uh, I'm Elliot. Um, spelled with one L and two T's, uh, makes an anagram for toilet if that helps. A uh, uh, cruel joke by my parents. Um, uh, I'm going to return the favour though when I have my own kids. Uh, my dream is to have twins, so I can call one Poppy and one Dominic, thus together christening them as Papa Dom. <laughs> I was having that right more, I call one Pete and the other one uh, Repeat. Yes, no, um, I'm not straight. Um, I do have a lot of straight friends, though, and they all tell me the same thing. Oh, we'll always be straight. We'll never change. We'll always be straight. And, yeah, you say that, but I, I used to think the same thing about pasta. And we all know what happens to that. Well, that gets hot and wet. Let's <laughs> <laughs> just say. Um, thank you, you know. Uh, yes, but no, um, I'm not straight. Um, I'm actually what you would call um, asexual. Um, it's like being gay, but not as fashionable. Um, um, uh, basically, my motto in life is, uh, snog anyone and fuck no one. <laughs> uh, or, or to put it another way, uh, you know, it means that, you know, I, I'm really fucking into people. I'm just not really into fucking people. Uh, uh, basically, um, I like my partners how I like my tea. Warm, sweet, and nowhere near my trousers. <laughs> um, uh, but yes, asexual, and not interested in sex. But how could that be? I'm not a plant, I'm not a robot, I'm not an amoeba. I know. I've checked. Uh, but you know, uh, people do find me a bit weird. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, uh, I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, sometimes I go on Pornhub just to admire.
admire the wallpaper. Applause for Mickey Clumber this year. Um, uh, sometimes I uh, go to orgies just for the free food. <laughs> um, uh, uh, handy tip, never try the free yogurt, it's always off. <laughs> so well, it's a reporter, guys. That's what I recognise you from, yeah, you were there. <laughs> That's not always that odd. I know something from it. Um, uh, but, uh, honestly, uh, but, um, sometimes, guys, um, sometimes I buy condoms because they're cheaper than socks. <laughs> bit, bit sticky, though. Uh, uh, but hey, you take them off, you get a free foot wax. See them? Swings and roundabouts, which I'm uh, no longer allowed near. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm quite used to getting thrown out of places. I mean, I mean once I was thrown out of Waitrose just for fondling all the grapes. <laughs> Uh, basically, let's just say the only time I'm sliding panties is to make more room in the underwear drawer. <laughs> uh, my version of Tinder is just a homepage for Greg's. <laughs> um, uh, but yes, no, uh, but, you know, say to you know, people say to me, how? How can you be asexual? How do you know you don't like sex if you've never tried it? Yeah. How do you know you don't like sex if you've never tried it? Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Then again. I've also never tried sticking my cock into a pencil sharpener, but yeah. So he's getting an inkling, it wouldn't feel right. I've also never tried voting for you, kid, but it, sometimes you just know, you just get a feeling. But no, I get you, I get you guys, and then he be saying, no, all right, sex is cool, but ha have you even tried hummus? <laughs> it's, it's pretty fucking good, but I'm just saying, like, like oh, oh, no, no, no hummus fans in here, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, avocados then, you fucking millennials. So, yeah. <laughs> Right. Um, I don't know what I'm saying, that's just, I guess, right. yeah, hummus is better than sex, I'm just saying, hummus is better than sex. If I say that to people, they just say to me, well, you're just saying that, because clearly, you've been having shit sex. Well, maybe you've just been having shit hummus, grandma. <laughs> uh, me and my grandma don't get on very well, you'll be amazed to hear. Um, in fact, every Christmas, me and my sibling play a fun game called Who Can Be The Most Disappointing Grandchild? <laughs> uh, uh, last year, I won by introducing Grandma to my one-legged Asian boyfriend. <laughs> we should give him a call. Uh, I, I tried telling my mum that joke, and I think it was the first time in history a mother was more horrified that her son was dating a man and didn't want to have sex with him. <laughs> no, she, 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 she really said to me, she, oh, come on, son, if you're going to be queer, you can at least do it properly. You can at least try having it up the bum. Um, uh, sorry, mum, I couldn't even have wanted to. Uh, not because I'm asexual, um, I'm just worried that the hemorrhoids would get in the way. Uh, oh, aren't you glad it's a, it's a, it's a stand up show? <laughs> I am. Uh, uh, yeah, the thing about hemorrhoids is they, uh, they go on for piles and piles. <laughs> yeah, that's a shit joke, literally. Uh, doctor was very rude to me. Um, I said, Doctor, what we get constipated? Went, well, tough shit. Went, I know, that's the problem! <laughs> He then gave me my medicine and told me I could stick it up my ass. I, I still don't know what a suppository actually is. They taste awful. I've uh, been trying DIY recently, um, quite bad at it, uh, but you know, who would have known? An asexual would be terrible at screwing things. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to build a closet so I could come out of it. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice joke. <laughs> Look, not only can they not only come out though as asexual, it's very much of a coming out process. I mean, there is no, there is no coming out, there is no coming, literally. <laughs> Without a cum, you can't come out. There's no cum which should be outed. You know? um, but you know, as you can probably tell, uh, being asexual can make uh, socialising a bit awkward. I don't know if I'm looking at you, it's like, you've got such lovely earlobes. Just, you know, <laughs> I, I, I'm not for sex, but I'm a great cuddler. You know? I, I've got feedback. <laughs> Uh, but you're not quite as good as this, madam, to a wonderful pair of lovely round nostrils. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yes, I mean, uh, one time I was at this party and this lad came up to me and said, Oh, mate, oh, mate, are you a boobs or an ass guy? I said, um, neither. I'm vegetarian. <laughs> so, you are, mate. You don't like sex. Uh, more than a hummus person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, though, are you in love? Uh, no, I'm in Glasgow. <laughs> Ah, the mother. Do you wank though? Right, right, right. Do you wank though? Right, right. Do you wank? Um, but, um, uh, let's just say that um, the piping's all plain, but the plumber's in Spain. 
You fucking walk by it. I mean, no, 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 that's fine. I don't masturbate. Um, and I kid you not, his next response was to ask me, What? If you don't work, how do your bollocks not like overflow? I'm not sure if labs know how penises work, guys. Um, but it's alright though, because I've constructed a handy guide for them. Right, take notes. Alright. Rule number one. Having a penis is not like having a flag. Just because you stick it in something doesn't mean you then own it. Rule number two. Having a penis is not like having a USB stick. Just because you stick it in something doesn't then entitle you to all that person's information. Um, no, you do need to um, eject it properly. <laughs> you can use the advice, I'm sorry. Uh, rule number three. Having a penis is like having a knife. Yeah! <laughs> having a penis is like having a knife. And if you stick it in a toaster, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys have all been very nice. Um, I was a bit um, scared about doing this. You know, as my granddad told me on his deathbed, if at first you don't succeed, then skydiving is not for you. <laughs> anyway, that's all for me. Thanks very much. Seen I'm starting the kebab show, and I'm standing at the door of me, I'm hot pushed, right? And it's spinning round really, really slow. And the grease is dripping off. See that, Glasgow? That's like a lap dance for a fat guy, isn't it? Bow, bow, bow! I like to be And then I shag it, and that's how Mary's is born. <laughs> yes, I heard somebody gagging, I fucking love doing that, right? <laughs> Listen, you're in for an absolute cheap mix. A very good friend of mine who plays in the BBC Scots Squad, he plays a copper. Every time I see him inside my head, I'm screaming edgy. <laughs> but listen, this guy's a guy, you're gonna love him. Please welcome to the stage, Chris Fogg! <laughs> Thank you very much. Wonderful, great to be here uh, for such a wonderful call.